Hi, you've probably heard about deep learning being the next disruptive technology when it comes to machine vision. Sure, when it comes to feature-based or heuristic-based training approaches, deep learning definitely has its merit. But how long does it take to train a deep learning solution? How complex really is the training procedure? And do you really need millions of images for a training to complete? I'm going to answer this and many more questions in this video. Hi, my name is Raghav Kashipa, CEO of Qualitas Technologies, and we've been working on deep learning based machine vision technologies for a couple of years now. Having seen a few hits and many misses, and I'm going to share with you what are some of the learnings that we've taken away from our experiences. So before we get into the deep aspects of deep learning, let's try to understand <clears throat> how deep learning really is different from, let's say, any other machine learning based uh, algorithm or architecture. So when you look at machine learning at a fundamental level, machine learning is the ability for machines to actually learn from examples. So let's say you want to identify uh, what is a defective part in any assembly line or any part that you are producing in your manufacturing line. So when you give it examples, the system is going to learn patterns and identify features which are important in classifying something as good or bad. Now, in machine learning, traditionally, a step involved as feature extraction was traditionally used. So you had to identify that features such as maybe edges or a color or the contrast or something about that image is important in classifying something as a defect or a non-defect. So that feature extraction had to be done programmatically and then fed into the neural network to learn about how these patterns contributed to the final result, which is classifying something as defective or good. In deep learning, the feature extraction part is abstracted away from the process. So you just give it examples and it figures out based on this large neural network, what features actually contribute to the result being what it needs to be. The second difference when it comes to machine learning and deep learning is the correlation between the amount of data that's being used for training and the expected outcome. In some older machine learning algorithms, the amount of data sort of plateaued the performance. So in other words, it reached a saturation level when it came to performance accuracy. So the more data you gave it, it didn't really move the needle in terms of improving the accuracy. However, deep learning has is a data-hungry algorithm. The more data you give it, it's proportionally going to improve the model. So here you had something where you gave it more data, there was no limit technically on the accuracy itself. And that made deep learning very popular. But on the flip side, if you need millions or even tens of thousands of images to be trained, that's going to make this practically impossible, wouldn't it? So there are some techniques in machine vision because of constrained environments in, under which images are taken, you can make some inherent assumptions and take away the need for such large data sets to train a model that is practically not going to be possible. So. From what we've seen, depending on the complexity, we're able to train something in the, with, with about a few thousand images and get a fairly accurate model. Now, there are some ways to actually augment or enhance the training data that we get. Using augmentation techniques, transfer learning, we're able to actually take pre-trained weights and then to be able to take new images and build upon what has already been done during the initial training. So, does deep learning actually work? The answer to that is a resounding yes. So we've seen many successes as long as we know what is possible within the realms of deep learning algorithms. So the first advice is make sure you choose the right problem set, have enough training samples and be ready with training examples that you can then use for training these uh, models that you're going to deploy. In addition, Set expectations with your customer to tell them that this is going to be an iterative process. There's going to be a long training cycle before you start to see results. Unlike rule-based algorithms where you can take one or two samples, provide a demo on the tabletop set setup or you know something that you can do very quickly, 
With deep learning, you need at least a few hundred samples to be able to take a meaningful result to your customer. The second point to keep in mind is to ensure that you're continuously monitoring the inferenced or the inspected images to identify causes of inaccuracies. So there's usually patterns that you'll start to identify among all the different misclassifications that your system is doing and you're able to plug these once you know that what those patterns are. So by being able to train more such examples, you're able to uh, plug a large accuracy gap that you have in your system. So to summarize, make sure that you're prepared with training examples as much as you can, set expectations with customers on what the process is, and three, follow an iterative approach after you've deployed this to grade, identify accuracy gaps, and retrain these system to make sure that you get a highly accurate system that at least matches the human inspector's accuracy. Thanks.